Hello, everybody. In today's episode, we're going to install a factory option, which I would call a wing Oldsmobile called the W35 spoiler, new exhaust tips, and repaint the ugly grills. Here's the wing. I've looked it over pretty well. It's not perfect. Uh, this, the guy said, was because from the way it was stored, that was bubble wrap touching it, and that that makes sense. I don't think that's, it looks ugly, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. I don't know if that's oil or something, but anyway, I don't know, plastic, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, I don't think it'll cause a problem with paint adhesion, uh, but I'll clean all that stuff off. I'll sand this, obviously, and prime it, but uh, more importantly, um, there's the two mounting holes, a little bit of stress crack there, stress cracking, a little tiny bit there, um, and there's a little tiny bit of damage on this here so those are the issues that i'm gonna have to fix with this so step one is obviously cleaning it off i was a little worried when i got this that that was going to be oily and it was going to be in the surface um it turns out to me it, brake cleaner would not touch it at all therefore it, you know it, it's not an oil-based stain okay so that's good news so i wound up uh cleaning the whole thing with brake cleaner alcohol and then just starting to da sand it down Step two here is to mix up some epoxy to repair the crack. I wanted to get that taken care of first. Uh, this is, um, you know, just a store-bought epoxy. I believe it is a 3M brand, um, you know, nothing special. Uh, two parts, mix it up until the color is consistent. It'll dry quicker in warmer weather. Now I spread the crack open with a putty knife, uh, squeezed it in there all the way into the crack, and then I'm using a bunch of rubber bands to hold it together while it dries. I got acrylic lacquer in right, cans the next um, morning, and clear uh, in cans. So this is dry. actual automotive paint. This, this isn't just like your duplicate. That was cracked open. And if I squeeze it, now I see it is not moving. And I was happy to see when, um, I don't think it really showed up in the high speed, but the, the you know, slow-mo, but whatever. Yeah, time lapse. This ridge of glue, you could see it definitely oozed out. So I was happy with that because I didn't want just glue just in the you know front edge of the split i wanted it to all the way in so i tried to shove the glue in uh, and then when i put the rubber bands on it did squeeze together and some oozed out so that's perfect so obviously that'll need sanded and trimmed and i think we're going to be in pretty good shape it feels solid to me because i don't have to sand that down this whole thing will need to be primed i'll maybe spend a little extra time block sanding there's little bits of glue here now, but like I said, I'll just sand those off. Some of them are picking off even, but no, maybe not. I'll definitely have to sand that down. So here's where I'm at with the uh, stanchions. Uh, this one has got a little bit of a occlusion, I think it is, in the mold. I do not think it's a crack. You see there, it's not level. Um, I think this is ABS plastic. I'm not sure. I don't think it's fiberglass, but a little bit, almost, but I I'm going to fill that with some epoxy. So let's mix some up. Now this is what the JV weld. This is steel stick, and it comes in a roll. It's this stuff. I don't think it really matters what you use. It's epoxy putty. I just want something fast setting, not slow setting, right? And it's what I accidentally stepped on it, but it's got like a black in the center, gray on the outside, and you mush it together, and it looks like that. And like I said, I honestly don't think the strength is a concern in this area. This is not structural, there's no crack. Not adhering the best. I want it to be too high and then I'll sand it to match. I'm gonna let that cure, I'm gonna put a little on this side. that cure. Next order of business is here is trying to get out a big wave, a big dip in the end of this wing. It was a big low spot that I'm filling here, overfilling with Bondo, uh, and then uh, we're going to sand it to shape. To be very honest with you, this whole thing is actually fairly wavy, and I, I think they all are. They're just that's just the way they come. Um, remember, this is not a you know hundred point show car. This is a driver, um, so you'll see though at the end you'll see uh, there are some waves throughout it, uh, but it's okay. 
And here is that same spot after it's been all blocked down and in primer. Um, of course, everything looks good in primer, but I was trying to get the sun to, to try and highlight some flaws. No, I didn't do a guide coat. Next time I will. Uh, now here's actually painting it, cleaned it off with acrylic clean, uh, and I stood it up. I put studs in, put those studs into two uh, pieces of the brake tubing, uh, and then screwed the tubing into the wood to hold it up in the air. And uh, trying to do the bottom first, um, you know, of course, I didn't want to flip it over, and the top is the most important part. So uh, right or wrong, that's the way I did it. The paint that I got is from A.L. Pavies. A.L. Pavies is in uh, on Promway Avenue in North Canton, Ohio, is a paint specialty shop. They actually scanned my car and then came up with a paint mix based on scanning the paint. Really awesome stuff. Uh, but this color came out as being called Cranberry. It's actually a Hyundai color, I guess. I got acrylic lacquer in cans um, and clear in cans. So this is actual automotive paint. This isn't just like your dupli color. It's not perfect. I'll DA it down. I don't know what that is. There was something happened to the paint in there. A little bit of trash there. I think I can sand that out. I think it'll be decent. Okay, so here it is. It's uh, about, uh, I think, two days later, actually. I didn't necessarily need to let it sit that long, but just was busy. Um, I, I didn't say this, but all the paint supplies. Um, here's, a, here's a receipt. I got all this stuff from A.L. Pavey, P-A-V-E-Y, A.L. Pavey's. Uh, A.L. Pavey is in North Canton, Ohio. You know, got some weld through primer, you know, squeegees, scuff pads, uh, cream hardener for Bondo, a couple spreaders. Uh, but then it was really the meat and potatoes and stuff was the acrylic clear coat. So two cans of the clear. That's this stuff right here. Uh, that's a clear like lacquer, I believe. And then the base coat was really 10 ounces. And the can is right here. It was 10 ounces of this stuff. Um, really good stuff. And, and by the way, see, it's a Hyundai. I don't know what year, but um, it looks like it's actually a Hyundai color. I think I said this before, but the color is cranberry. So now my car has a color name. Um, and so they well, mix that up, stuff up. Here's, I guess, what it's composed of. The 10 ounces is composed of. So Hyundai Co. JG, that's interesting. And uh, just for that 10 ounces, it was, you know, uh, not too bad, 51 bucks. But then, like I said, to put it in the cans, it's extra money. I think it was 10 bucks to each to put it in the cans. Um, that's why I got two of the spray cans. This is what I actually, you saw me actually paint with, okay? Anyway, so it came out about almost 300 bucks with tax. But remember, this is not a how to paint a car channel, okay? I'm not a professional painter. Now, I had a big sag here. A sag is when the paint kind of bleh, like, you know, sags over, I guess. Usually it happens more when something is painted, you know, vertically, and then you get like a the, too much paint. When you get too little paint put on, like you see here, how it's just cloudy, that didn't flow. That's because you have overstray. So this. You see right in here, it flowed pretty nicely. You can see the fluorescent light. Still a little bit of orange peel. Um, but that's kind of what it looks like when the paint doesn't flow well. You can see here, you can actually see some of the scratching. So I didn't go fine enough with the DA to get the scratches out. But it's not perfect. It's not a show car. But so right now, what are we about? 16, 20 inches away. And from here, from a couple, three feet away, it's going to look really nice in the car. But so what I'm doing here, I'm starting with water. Okay, 220 grit. And you can see I'm getting that sag out. So then I got to go progressively finer and finer and finer. I applied extra paint where I knew there were some flaws. That's why you see this shiny spot. I applied extra uh, clear here and here over the flaws where I knew I was going to do more sanding. Okay, so I'll put it on time lapse and I'll let you see how it's progressing. guys i'm a little bit pissed the wet sanding was coming out pretty good you see i'm down to 400 grit that's taken you know you can see it's almost all the way gone that would probably pretty much just disappear but i sanded through the color so <sighs> and i think i can touch this up but i'm going to sand that down flatter uh reapply some color probably blend it in here
So it's been sanded all the way back down, 600, starting about here. I repainted it. I um, actually have a couple spots in it. You can still almost see it. Can you see where I sanded through the texture? I'm not sure if the texture color was a little different. I think I might put just one more light coat on this. I don't know, or just clear it. I think I'm gonna just clear it. I think it's gonna be okay. I don't think that'll show through and clear. So this is always 600 grit. See a little bit of hazing, that's because of the humidity that should buff out. Okay, so here's what I've got. This is just a rubber sheet. I've got, I got this years ago from McMaster Car. I don't know, it's like a 16th inch thick, 100,000 something in that ballpark. I'm not saying this is the exact right way to do it, but based on the, some of the drawings I've seen, here's one of the key things um, that I've figured out from looking at the drawing, which I'll cut in a picture of here. Uh, but you see, obviously this has two mounting studs, right? So the most obvious thing would be to, you know, put a bolt, a short bolt through here, into there and then two screws on this. But if you look at the drawing, it actually shows three holes. So how do you get three holes out of two? Well, the way you do it is you have the center one here uh, is a long stud and, and you know, the, there are stud kits available, but I think I'm just gonna use this all thread is you know gonna be just fine. So now the reason I think that's a lot better is you have three mounting points. So let's just say there's some pulling force on the wing, lifting it, you know, you're, you're putting tension, okay? Um, you're, 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 you know, basically if there's a lifting force, which because it's upside down, lifting would be this way, you're going to be putting a tension force right on this one small area of the wing. Okay. Um, now with this all thread running through the deck lid, then what you're doing is you're pulling, well, I guess you're still doing the same thing, uh, but the force is now transferred. There's the same force on the wing, but there's going to be less force. Um, on this thing, it's gonna be transferred to the trunk lid instead of pulling on here and then, you see what I'm saying? So instead of pulling in this way, it's all connected to the trunk lid. So I think it is a little sturdier that way, okay? Um, I think this stud leans forward a little more than those two though. Now for the connections between here and the trunk, between here and here, um, I cut this, the rubber sheeting, I cut this little I made a little gasket and I'm going to put one between here and the trunk lid as well. All right, here's what I have. Just, you know, shoot a rubber there and a couple holes. Obviously, a large hole there for that to pass through. You know, just give me some room to see. And we'll see how this works. For this part, I'm going to go ahead and glue the gasket on. I'm using what I use for my shoes. My cobblings is master all-purpose cement. It's basically a high strength, like the form of like a rubber cement. Um, I get it from eBay. I think I get it from the seller Nord shoe. Read the directions on the can to basically apply it to both sides, let it set up, stick it together. It's gonna set really fast. It's very warm out here. It's like 90 degrees. All right, it's only been a couple minutes, but it's, like I said, it sets very fast in this hot, hot weather here. And I'm gonna trim a little bit of the excess off.
Okay, so here are the actual GM drawings on how to mount the wing. Uh, so I got this, believe it or not, from a guy who had a W35 wing on his 442 at the Old Club of America 2023 uh, Dayton show. And I scanned it with my phone. So you can see here the measurements are from the center of the deck lid to the left set of holes, the driver's side, then from the driver's side to the passenger side. And I think that's the best way to do it. And I measured the holes out that same way. Uh, don't go center to the left and then center to the right. You know, you should measure from left to right. And I double checked that with the dimensions on the wing itself. Uh, found the center of the deck lid by measuring from the top left corner to the top right corner, finding the middle. Um, and then uh, I measured down and then measured again from, you know, I took the half the measurement uh, um, in the next spot. Uh, laid the holes out. I spent a lot of time measuring, remeasuring, triple measuring this, and then center punched the holes uh, with a center punch, and then started with a small bit. Uh, the first bit was dull, that's why I switched. So you'll see once I get a good drill bit, it pops right through the sheet metal. This part was a little nerve wracking, uh, but once you commit, you just got to do it. The second side goes a lot quicker. And here's the mounting on the bottom. You can't see the front, uh, you know, nut because it is, um, you know, inside there. But I, I will call, obviously cut off the stud. But it's on. It's mounted. Doesn't it look pretty? I think the color match is fantastic. I was really pleasantly surprised with the color match. Just being an odd color, I was afraid it was going to be difficult to match. But it's it looks as good in person as it does uh, as it does here. So. Here's before. I know they don't look bad, but you really get up to them, you see the paint's chipped all over them. And there's just no character on the front of the car. Yeah. The other challenge is they're actually the tabs, there's two tabs. They either come back to here or here. I think this one should go to here, but the tabs are busted, so there's really the only thing holding them in really, uh, this one bolt, and then these tabs right there that go in so they're not really supported like they should be they kind of flop flops around this is kind of interesting so i've got the grills out of the car this would be the uh, passenger side grill and you see these horizontal uh shiny pieces i don't know if they're stainless or chrome but i think they're stainless and they just have these little tabs But once you get them back far enough out of the way, this... Okay, this one seems to be kind of stuck. Oops, there it goes. It's a piece of stainless trim. Now I can polish that up. Isn't that cool? Okay, I've got all the trim taken off. I've got this thing prepped. I've even sanded it down with 400 grit. I'm going to do this outer part and paint the whole thing uh, with a silver color. With this, I think it matches, but I'm gonna paint the inner with a charcoal color to match the wheel. Here's before sanding. See, each one of those little scrapes will wind up being a divot in the paint if you don't sand those out.
Now painting the outside was pretty easy. That went very smoothly. The color came out very nice, matched a brighter, cleaner version of the original paint. Uh, painting the insides went terribly. Now you can see here, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, putting the uh, masking paper down around the edge, which was good enough to, to you know, prevent overspray from getting on the outside. And I use that darker gray charcoal color. Um, it's not obvious yet, but when you look at the result, it doesn't show up that well in these first couple pictures. Uh, this is the charcoal paint that I used and it was dupla color and you can see here dark shadow gray I had the same exact problem with two different cans of dupla color uh, Dark shadow gray paint that I purchased from two different auto parts stores And number one the color was a little bit too similar, but the main problem is here in this video or this picture. Can you see how it looks really splotchy? It looks like I just flat out, you know, didn't paint parts of it, but I'm telling you, I used two entire cans just on these two grills. Um, I used a massive amount of paint. There was something wrong with both cans of paint. Uh, I'm not often that I'll say something is defective, but it was not me not shaking the cans. I shook them for half of forever. It wasn't my application. It wasn't lack of coats. And here is a test spot that I did to illustrate on the cap itself. Uh, when I sprayed onto a spare cap I had, you see the center of the spray pattern has almost no pigment, and then the pigment collects on the edges. So I just flat out couldn't get the paint to paint. I don't know how else to say it. as they came off and this is just simply after using steel wool on them not great with the back side which you don't see but so i'm going to try polishing them up i just spent about a few minutes just polishing this section and i mean it's slightly shinier but that's not going to do it now here's right or wrong how I repaired the tabs. These grills are like $400 a pair and they don't even have the correct ones for my car and I don't want to put 442 grills on it. It's part of the reason I'm keeping them gray. So these are plastic runners from old models that I have from you know 20 years ago, 30 years ago when I was a kid. I took a propane torch, I uh, you know clipped some bars like three or four rows, uh, melted them down with the propane torch on top of the vise, flat surface of the vise, and then I took a metal spatula and I smushed it flat to make a tab. Then I took such tab, um, and I know that when you just glue two things together like end to end, it doesn't stick. So I kind of tapered it, like thinned it down, uh, and I thinned down the grill, and I epoxied it, uh, you know, like overlapped one below the other. And, uh, you know, here's the other side. Um, I didn't take pictures of the whole process, but dremeled it down flat a little bit on the top, drilled a hole for it for the clip, and uh, it worked. I want to let you guys see the final result here. It is definitely not perfect. And this is probably about the worst, to show off the worst side of it here. A little bit of orange peeling. It's like a little bit of hazing. Um, I'm also going to show you guys, if you can see this little pattern in the paint, it didn't buff all the way out. I actually turned this upside down like two days after it was dried. Um, and a towel made an imprint in it. So, But it's not bad, right? I think the color match is incredible. There are a couple flaws in it, but I'm ecstatic with it. And I think the car looks really aggressive with it. I think it goes well with the wheels.
And I'll show you up front the grills too. My wife even mentioned that she thought the grills really looked a lot better. They are charcoal. I had a lot of problems with the paint on it. Ideally, I would have liked them just a hair lighter to match the wheels better, but I don't think that's too bad, is it? And I never noticed how large that gap was. I looked at pictures of the car when I got it, and it was that way, so I don't know how, if this can come up, or I don't know, the hood really can't come down much more. I mean, maybe the front of the fender could come up. I don't know. I'm not even sure if I'm gonna worry about it, but. Two of my friends voted vehemently to leave the chrome slats off, and I'm not sure that I could put those chrome slats back on very easily because the paint thickness now made that bigger. I might get a new one of these. I actually tried, I know it doesn't really look like it. I did polish it up with the Dremel. So that's 40 bucks. So next time I do an order of the Fusic, I'll probably up for one of those. And it doesn't really show, but. Replace that fastener with a nice new one. One of my buddies said it's not the right one, but there is a metal clip. It was just threaded into the, the, the plastic. So at least there's a metal clip on it that looks nicer, stronger. I repainted this, there was a bunch of scratches and I know I didn't fill them all, but I didn't want to get into a whole project of, you know, repainting this whole thing. So I just scuffed and painted that surface. And now I've got four mounting tabs. Nice and secure. And the next mini project here is the exhaust tips. Uh, they just look narrower the way they're angled and how far they stick out past the bumper accentuates their narrowness. Um, uh, you know, they're uneven. I can't get them more even because they're clamped into the pipes ahead of them too tight. Uh, you know, the pipes are ovaled. So I had these chrome two and a half inch. The exhaust is two and a quarter inch. I had these two and a half inch chrome tips literally for like 25 years on my shelf. Uh, so they have a little bit of a bell mouth, like a taper at the very front part of them. Um, and you can see here in these two photos, if you notice, the tailpipe is still on the car behind the chrome tip. It's sticking down and I'm trying to decide how to angle them. Um, I just had to basically trim the bell mouth a little bit at the front so that I could slip it over the two and a quarter inch pipe and I welded it into place and I tried to get the tips where they just barely stuck out uh, behind the bumper and I tried to get them parallel to the ground. So for, you know, no dollars for something that I had sitting on the shelf, you know, a little improvement. I showed you this guys before this is bump strip like right cheap bump strip that you buy to you know i think at AutoZone or something like that i gotta give him credit it worked so here is the this would be the driver's side drip rail molding it doesn't look too bad but if we really zoom in on it here at the end you can see it is dented uh, those are not that big of a deal if you can do a little bit of body work. And you can see that edge there, um, you know, it's a little bit bent up. So I'm going to straighten this out. I'll show you. Uh, you can kind of follow along. So the first thing I'm going to try to do is, is straighten out that rail. will be the first thing. Then I will body work out uh, those dents. And just after a few minutes, you can see it's a little bit lumpy there. Don't worry about that. This little patch right there. See, the dent is gone. Uh, now let me work on, um, yeah, I'll work on these two. Do you see there's two dings there? I'll try and get in the light so you can see it, but there are two dings. There you can see them. So if you flip, so they're towards the bottom. So when I flip it over, they're now towards the top. They're not as easy to see from the back, but you still can see them. Do you see them over here? <clears throat> it's a, <coughs> excuse me, it's like a body, body working hammer. You can buy body working hammers. This one actually is a broken cobbling hammer, but it works. I just ground a little, nice little point onto it. <coughs> <coughs> okay, moving in the right direction. Obviously they're still there, but you see I'm just working on it.
there's some down here. This, from your point of view, bottom edge. You can see them on the back. These you can see pretty clearly on the back. They're on the top now. So now the dents are basically gone, but now it's rough. Do you see that? I'll show you, sand out the roughness. I think I need a little more there. By the way, do you hear when it sounds like that versus, okay? You hear the difference versus the hard taps versus the muffled taps. The muffled taps are when the stainless is not against the bench vise. The harder taps are when the stainless is directly backed up by the vise. Um, you know, so it just depends what you're trying to achieve, which one you want to do. So in other words, if I know, if this was a sheet metal, I know I had a spot like, you know, a, a, a raised spot you know, I would expect to hear hear it more muffled versus if I think I have it flat and I'm trying to get it to conform to the shape of the vice. I hope that kind of makes sense. It's not bad. I'll keep working on a little bit. Uh, uh, I'll keep working on a little bit here. I think that's pretty good as far as the body working phase. Now I'm going to file it. So what I need to do next is get rid of the pimples. Okay, I just have a kind of a nice little, it's a round file. Can you see there, it's knocking off the high spots. I can get it in the light right there. Do you see the dull spots? Uh, the dull areas, the majority of it's dull. That's where I was filed, and those shiny uh, dimples are the low spots. Hopefully, I did the body work to the point where I can get rid of most all of those high and low spots without sanding or filing through the stainless material. These are not chrome, these are polished stainless. Remember, I'm an amateur at this, okay? I'm very much an amateur at this. I'm not a, okay, professional. I'm all, all this stuff, I'm 100% self-taught. See, like there? I may not get 100% of it out, but I think it'll be good enough to where you won't notice it, you know, off the street. Now, let me start sanding that down with some finer sandpaper. Uh, I think I'm going to start with 400. Some 400 grit. I think I need a little more filing. Do you see that? I'm going to try this file. It's obviously flat on one side. I'm going to try the flat side. See if I can get some of that, you know, out. I'm using the round side against this curve. I'll show you the end result. I don't think you guys want to watch this whole thing, but it's coming around. You see that, right? So that's just with 400 grit sandpaper. It's not perfect, but that's not bad compared to where we started.
clean it off with some brake cleaner. There's what we've got. You see it's smooth but dull. So now we gotta polish it. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try with some steel wool. I really need some metal polish next. It's getting close. I wish I had some 1500 and 2000 grit sandpaper. Okay, we had a little mishap here. Uh, that's not supposed to come off. Luckily, that didn't hit the good car. And um, I don't think this is going to buff out anymore. Uh, here, you want to unwrap that? It's snagged. Or did, this, did this come off first or did that snag I first? I think there's a washer missing somewhere. Yeah, I think you're right. Cool. Huh. Not real shaggy. <laughs> it was getting so nice, too. Yeah, well, at least it wasn't expensive. Oh. oh, yeah, there's the washer. Now, uh, you can turn it towards me a little bit. Yeah, you can see clearly shiny, 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 shiny. You can see right where you stop. Yeah, wow. Massive yeah, difference. Nice thing. It's beautiful. And here's the end that was repaired. Here we go. And you have to, how do you put this on? It slides under this corner piece, right? Yeah. And then it just wraps around the molding, right? Oh, there you go. You got it. And you cl uh, clip it over the top first? Yep. Push it on the bottom. Actually, I need a rubber mallet. Oh, really? A mallet? Look at that, huh? Is that on on? Nope. It's not wrapped all the way around the bottom or something, it, right? It, it is. I think we may have to take it off and bend it. It oh, looks like clamp it may it down have a little bit. Bend it. So it may have spread open a little bit. Yeah. Okay, but we're most of the way there. Okay. Yep, I see what you're saying. I think it does need to be tightened a little bit. Stay tuned. I've got some exciting stuff coming up next. I've got a new dashboard here that I'm putting a custom gauge cluster in. You can see over here, I've got brand new pro car seats. I've actually got a complete interior, a complete black interior, uh, all the side panels. I've got door panels and everything, the rear seats, uh, but I've got some bad news as well. Uh, let me turn the camera. In pulling the carpeting out, I found rust holes on the inside of the car. The floor is rusted from the inside out in just a few small areas. And that is because the windshield was leaking. You can see the windshield is out and look how horrible, look how bad that rust is. Uh, all this stuff is gonna be cut out, but don't worry, I've already got new patch panels and a new floor pan. So stay tuned, come back next week. All right guys, there you go. There's today's project. You guys know what to do. Hit that like button and subscribe if you feel appropriate. Thanks guys, I'll see you next week.